I'm Sarah. In my previous video, I introduced the KTOR API that I've been working on that fetches city data. Today, I'd like to demonstrate the app from start to finish, from adding a user, adding a client, getting an API key, authenticating the request, and pulling back city data. So let me just get right to it. Um, here I am in Postman, and my server is running, and I've got it set to port 8080. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a user. And let me go ahead and send that request. Great. So my user's been created with a user ID of 8. So next, I'm going to create an API key. So in here, I'll put 8 and make sure the email matches up. And here I'm adding an app name, which is just, it could be anything, YouTube app, weather app. And then also I'm specifying the type. It can be development or production. So I'll go ahead and add that. And this is great. Now I have my user ID, email, the create date, the app ID, and here's my API key. So I'll go ahead and copy that. And now finally with my API key, I can go ahead and fetch my city data. So I'll put the API key in the header, and it's X API key. And here I'm making a call to the city's route, and I'm typing in the city name, and I only need to give it a prefix, and it'll show me everything. Uh, so let me click send. And this is great, I've been authenticated. It brings back my user information along with the cities. So here's Phoenix. And here's all the city data, so I get zip, latitude, longitude, city, state, and population. And here's a list of all the cities. So I can type in something else here. I could do uh, Reno. There we go, I got Reno, Nevada. So pretty cool. That's the basic functionality of the front end. Now I'll go to IntelliJ and I'll explain how all this works. Okay, now I'm in my KTOR API project in IntelliJ. And first I'm gonna start off by showing you the actual table that's created with exposed. So I have my user app ID, which is set to auto increment. I've got a relationship here, so a reference to my user table with the user ID. And this is really cool because this allows me to create a join when I create, when I insert the user app and then pull back the user information along with the user app and the API key. So I have the index here. It's not, it doesn't have to be unique because you could have a development or a production version of the app type. So here's the app name, the type, which is an enum and exposed handles that just fine. Everything works out great. Here's my API key. It's set to be a unique constraint. That way, just in case for some reason my app generates a duplicate API key, I'll get an exception when I call my DAO. And that way I can be sure that there's no duplicate API keys. And finally, I have the create date and the primary key. So next, I'll show you my use case. Here, this is a pretty big use case. It goes through a lot of different steps. So first I'm checking just for blank fields. Then I'm making sure that the user actually exists. So when you send the request to create the app, you have to pass the user ID and the email. So it just checks to make sure that information actually exists in the database, and as long as it does. Uh, then it makes sure that you're not inserting a duplicate app. So if you've already inserted a development app with the same name, you can't insert duplicates. Next, it generates the API key, and it actually inserts it into the database at this point because we have all the information and all the checks have, have been validated. It assigns the create date to now, and if everything is good with that, then it finally returns the user response back to the client. Next, I can show you how I generate my API key. I have a character pool, which is a list of characters from A to Z, capital A to Z, and zero through nine. And then down here, when it's invoked, I call secure random, and I create a byte array of 16, which results in an API key of 15 characters long. 
So I loop through the byte array, and I map my character pool, and I call random next int, and I give it a max size of the size of my character pool. So it won't return me a number anything higher than that. So I make it 22 or 5, and based on that number that comes back, it uses that as the character pool index. So if it's 5, it pulls back F, 59, it pulls back 7. And finally, when it's finished looping through, it joins all of those characters together to give me the API key string. And then finally, it returns something like this, which is just a combination of lowercase, uppercase, and numbers. And that returns back to my use case. And now in my user app DAO, I have a mapper. So when I get the result row from the database, I map it to my user class. And here's the function to check for the duplicate app. Pretty basic stuff here. It just selects where the app name equals the app name and the app type equals the app type. Next, this function's really cool. This gets the user and the user app. So it's calling a join with exposed. Really easy because I created that reference and the way I created the table, I can just say users inner join with user app and select it where the API key equals the API key that's passed to the function. It's very cool, it works great, and it comes back and then it goes through the mapper function and returns everything back to the client all at once. And then finally it just inserts the app. Pretty standard stuff here, inserts the values, um, and if there was an error, it'll come back with an error to the response. The next thing I want to show you is authentication. I decided to use the third-party library. It's from uh, Lucas Forced and it's KTOR API key. This allows me to use the API key in the header. Very cool. It worked great, easy to set up. So this is the dependency for it. Here's the link if you want to try it out. And it was, again, really easy to set up in my security module here. Basically, you create the principal, and then I pass my user with app here, which has the API key. So I install it for KTOR, and then call API key. My challenge, if there's a challenge, I throw a custom exception, and I'll show you how I handle that in a second. And the validate basically calls the user app DAO. It gets the user with the API key from the header. And if it actually returns the user, then everything is good. And it returns the app principal with the user app data. Otherwise, it returns null. So how I handle the exception is in my status pages. And if you saw my previous video, this function actually looks a little bit different now. I've separated it out. So if it's a serialization exception, that means the JSON from the client is bad or malformatted. Then I say if it starts with a user route, then show the user object and what it should look like and send a customized response back with the user information. Otherwise, check the apps and send a custom response for the app, user app um, object. Now, if it's an authentication exception, it sends a custom error too, that you have an invalid API key, and then it sends a custom message back. Otherwise, it just responds with 500 internal server error. And then finally, in my city route, it calls the authenticate. And so here, this is cool, we get the principal back that we validated with the configure script in the security file. So I get my user with the app. And this, what I could do here is really cool. If I wanted to, I could insert it into the database and I could track every request that a client was making to my API. This would be great to you know, track how many queries they're making per second or something like that. Not very good with SQLite, which is what I'm using, but if you had a more robust database, you could certainly do something like that. And for now, I'm just getting the name prefix and also zip. I really haven't tested the zip portion of this yet. I was just really excited to get the API up and running. So right now, pretty much the city name uh, is, is the only route that works. And then it makes sure it's not blank or null. And then finally, 
I make a call to get my city data and respond back to the user. And that's pretty much it. My next step is to create an Android app that consumes this API and you know, explains what it does, shows a little demo of it, and allows you to manage your API keys. Thanks for watching. Bye.